Yeah. Um, <laughs> you do. You throw things at me. You put things in my face all the time. You constantly violate my physical boundaries. Why do you think I retaliate so much, Laura? Hello, listeners. It is so lovely to be back. It's been ages since we recorded. Yeah, it has actually. What was our last episode? Nanny McPhee? It was Nanny McPhee. It was our Christmas special. It went down really well, that one. Thank you for everyone who's listened. Don't know when this is going to come out. Hopefully soon. But um, yeah, we can't wait to get back because we've had had our break and it's just back to the grind now. Back to the grind. Not that we consider this to be a hardship, but you know. We also all have to go back to work. Oh yes, yeah. I've I've done that already. Oh yeah, Elsie's yeah. been back at work for like a week. Now. Yeah. Oh yeah, I worked through New Year. I was just in this room on my own all of New Year. Aww. It was mortifying because I was really looking forward to getting a lot done that night. I thought I'm going to clean everything. I'm going to do all my cooking for the week. What actually happened was I had two thimblefuls of wine and I was wiped out it was i was actually worried i was like what's changed in my person to make this happen the entire year just happened so you're just tired that's fine i guess i was tired mm. um but i want to start so we're doing pepper pig today yeah we decided this <sighs> yesterday thank you laura pepper <laughs> pig i'm pepper pig <laughs> this is my little brother george <laughs> This is Mummy Pig, and this is Daddy Pig. <laughs> Peppa Pig. Um, but I want to start this episode by reading out a message from a listener. So this is from uh, a listener called James. Hi, James. Just wanted to say I'm loving the podcast so far and I'm about to start the Am I High episode. I've been feeling very lonely lately and listening to you ramble about some of my favourite childhood shows has been a real comfort on my commute to and from work. So thank you for all the laughs. It's really helped a lot. I hope I'm not alone in saying that you've made my days a little easier. Thanks, Laura. (laughs) Just choking. (laughs) Not sure if you're open to requests, but I'd love to hear you discuss Hyder in the House. Or if you haven't watched that, Tots TV or Jungle Run. Feel free to read this out on the podcast. All the best, James. And James wanting a readout. <laughs> I've got to admire it. Got to admire it. <laughs> yeah, you've got, you've got to admire it. I mean, if you don't ask, you don't get, right? Exactly. And he got. You got, James. And the reason I wanted to read that one out is not just because it was so lovely to read those words, but that was the first message we've ever had from a listener and it it's just, the first, first message we've ever had from someone that we don't know. That we don't know, yeah. We've not yeah. got any connection to them and they sent us a nice message. And we've had, a few, we've had a few people say they listen to the podcast on their commute, which is, I think that's so nice. It's, it's nice. Honestly, it made me feel a bit teary when I yeah. read it that morning. Like we all gathered round and read it because it was just a real affirming kind of people listen and it makes them happy kind of moment. So James... Honestly, that meant so much, and thank you for that. Is that a good way to start the year? I think it is. I think it is. Yeah, we've the the growth we've had in the last couple of months has just been like I don't want to use government mandated unprecedented, but <laughs> <laughs> but it has been. It's happened so quickly. Like we went. I would say last couple of weeks. Really. Yeah, the last couple. Up. The last couple of weeks on like Instagram, especially. We, you know, we kind of had some success on TikTok a few, a couple of months ago, but on Instagram, we've, you know, surpassed the 10k mark and followers. I know a lot of people have been following based on the kind of quote unquote relatable Tots TV stuff. And if that's all you're interested in, then that's absolutely fine. I'm glad I can provide that service for you. Oh, we love doing it. We love doing it. We really do. I'm also so grateful for everyone who's discovered us through the social media channels and has followed us and then proceeded to click through and download and listen and engage with us and that's not something that i expected to happen so yeah i'm very grateful 
I had hope it would happen. That's why I started the book. Well, <laughs> you always hope, don't you? Yeah. But, I, you know, it's not something I expect to happen. Do you know what I mean? It's not like, yeah. oh, I'm not assuming I'm going to be successful. <laughs> it just makes it all so worth it. And we love we loved doing it anyway. We have such a great time. But yeah, all the hours of editing, it to know that people are listening to our voices while they walk to work, it's just so nice. And we really appreciate it. And would it be, I think, no, it's too, it's too early and too much to call it a community. Is it? Laura, do you have anything to say? Well, it's just, I wish we like had like party poppers or something because 10K is a milestone, at least for Instagram. That's Laura's party popper noise. <laughs> In another life, she was a Foley artist. We, the, oh my God. Yeah. So we make loads of songs, right? Which... Yes, very, explain yeah. what that means. So, like, when there's a song, if there's a short enough word, it, we just change it to Meg. So, like, and this is something that Meg started herself, yeah. and we have actually spoken about this on the pod yeah. before. Like, what are our favorite ones? I'm like a Meg. I am a Meg. We will Meg you. We will Meg you. <laughs> Things can only get Mega. <laughs> yeah. So the <laughs> the other day I was like, oh, we should do like sound effects, but it's just Meg. So like, you know, like a pew 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 pew. But it's like Meg 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 Meg. <laughs> Oh, oh no! Oh, stop! Uh, stop it! Stop it! Stop it! ASMR. Just gonna lose all of our followers, Laura. No one wants this. Some people like it. Well, that's maybe bonus content. If you enjoy the sound of Laura's bones rubbing against each other, oh. <laughs> drop us a comment. Disgusting. I'm sure. I'm sure you're a niche. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Creatus. What the fuck is that a name? <laughs> That's what the, the sound is called, I think. Last yeah. night, me and Meg were Googling the difference between sand, silt, clay, and loam. loam. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out loam is just a mix of all of them. Loamy. Loamy. A loamier say? soil. When did this happen? Oh, when you, just were, last when night. you were washing up. Um, you weren't there. Um, before we get into the topic of Peppa Pig, I just want to say that <laughs> I'm so I'm sorry. It's got nothing to do with anything. Um, Meg said today that if you buy food from TK Maxx, you're an actual degenerate. No, I didn't. I, don't I, discuss no, I, didn't. It. I didn't say degenerate. I said wrong I think in. there's something seriously wrong with you. <laughs> it's because we were in TK Maxx and Meg picked up chorizo. Which... Yeah, I, Laura bought some pasta, and I think pasta's okay. It's dry goods. She, she bought a big pot of salt i think salt's fine yeah but when you're stretching it like i don't want any of the sweets any of the panettones any of the, the meats meat. <laughs> i don't want that from tk Maxx. <laughs> oh <laughs> we're out of meat i guess i'll go to tk, TK maxx Max for my meat we were in the checkout line you know how like tk maxx and other places like it have loads of stuff just as you're queuing to yeah. entice you and i called it food tat she said, I, didn't, I didn't know there was food tat. It's food tat. <laughs> yeah. I remember standing there and they had cookies that were for each of the friends from Friends, but they only had three. It was like a Joey, I remember you saying a this, Monica yeah. and a Chandler. And I was like, oh, great. Can't wait to stock up on my Chandler cookies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some absolute food tat. Nonsense. Deranged <laughs> shit. You know when you go to like, the clearance bit in like yeah. the homewares? I picked up something and it was just the cup. It was like um, it was like a big keep cup, but it right. had no lid. Oh, so they on. were trying to sell for like three pounds as a vase. Yeah, basically, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was ridiculous. TK Maxx, TK Maxx have a word meat. with yourself. I'm sorry, meat from TK Maxx is so. Funny. I'm sorry, but if you're if you've got stuff like that that you're trying to flog and it's missing bits, like offer it to staff or throw it out. No one's gonna buy it. Mm. Oh, uh, let's right get so, back to the topic at hand. Peppa Pig. Yeah. Bedtime story. It is night time. Daddy Pig is reading Peppa and George a bedtime story. And so the prince, the princess, the budgie and the frog all lived happily ever after. The end. <laughs> the bedtime story has sent Peppa and George to sleep. Good night, my little piggies. George is awake. You've all watched a bit? Yes. What did you think? Well, let's start there. Well, it's it's quite a controversial topic, is Peppa Pig, because it's so big that even though it's like the most mild show you can imagine, 
people have problems with it because it's so massive. It is 180, uh, what's the word for it? Re- regions? Territories. territories. It's 180 territories. Yeah, it's a global phenomenon. I simultaneously like it and don't like it. Me too. I've got, I think I've Let's actually discuss. got quite a lot of good things to say about it. Like, I think in many, like, you cannot argue that, so three girls voiced Pepper, obviously, I don't know if I'm already touching on things that you've no, you're right, down, yeah. But three girls voiced Pepper, and they're all so cute. Like, you can yes. You can tell by her voice that all the kids that ever voiced are just, were like the, the cutest kids well, in the, the world. Well, middle, the middle one did it for so long. She did it she for was, like 15 years She was an adult when she quit. So. Yeah, she quit when she was like 20 or something. Mm. So I was reading about the first one, Lily Snowden something. Snowden Fine. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was um, Lily Snowden Fine. Yeah. Um, she, she was, it, she was one of the kids of the creators and it's like was hmm. she the kids of the creators or was no. she the kid of the one of their friends she was the kids of the creators friends yeah. and her parents the the friends were also animators right. so they worked together as a pair yeah. um in the 80s and 90s and did quite a lot of famous yeah. cartoons um and they live in Canada now and the girl that originally voiced Peppa Pig has a Canadian accent now yeah so she's still the voice of the opening because obviously they just recorded that in 2004 and exactly (laughs) yeah so it started in 2004 as of 2021 it had 380 something episodes Mm -hmm. i believe they've stopped making it for now but they're going to start again in something like 2028 or something like that well-earned break (laughs) yes exactly like we just had because it was someone's kid, someone's affiliated kid, and what I was reading about it, I don't think she was paid. It was a bit confusing because it was like she was paid half a donut. At the oh, end of the day. well, her- she said her mum gave her half a donut for being a good yeah. girl. I thought that's how I took that. Yeah, so the way that a lot of kids' um, voice acting works is that because often they're too young to read and perform at the same time. Uh, an adult will read the lines to them yeah. bit by bit and they'll repeat it back, which is sometimes why in Charlie and Lola, for example, it's very cute and it does sound very childlike, the way that sometimes kids stop to think in the middle of a sentence because mm. they've only just started using sentences. Sometimes Lola will say something like, we honestly promisely promise to look after your dog because they've cut it in the middle to read the lines to her Aww. and that's how yeah that's how Peppa Pig was done so her mum was a voice actor as well so her mum was the one that was reading the lines to her and she said oh I get quite annoyed when I had to stop mid-take because I banged on a chair or something so a bit like us with Laura <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry my mum did say you you need to be nicer to Laura <laughs> She listened. Are you actually she? upset? Well, right now? Yeah. No. Or is it Good. just is it just for the for show? Well, a minute ago I coughed would... because I was trying to fuck with Elsie because I was trying to make water noises directly into her ears. <laughs> you choked <laughs> instead. And I choked instead. <laughs> so you know that one's fully on me. <laughs> so what do we think of what are our opinions? I think I think Laura's got purely negative opinions. I can Not- tell by purely but like 80 purely i like the colors <laughs> and I, shapes and sounds i i didn't like it that much i tried to watch like because there's so many episodes going on for so many years i watched one episode in season one one episode in season three and one episode in season which is like four episodes per single episode oh lot, wow because i was like Did a lot change no okay and I, <laughs> I wanted to see if stuff changed well so the, the voice changed which i didn't even notice which is actually well done them um but I was thinking, oh, this started in 2006 when there's certain things that just weren't applicable to children. iPads. Sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Just to think of one, like technology. And then I was like, I want to know if in season six they've included stuff like that. Maybe they have, and it just isn't in every episode. But um, yeah, it didn't change much at all. I just find Peppa really annoying. (laughs) Yeah, that's something that we'll explore later because lots of parents think of her as a really bad role model. What did you think of the show, Meg? Um... I don't necessarily think it's bad, but I do think it's outdated, like, from our perspective. But I do think that their main problem is that 
the more people you watch it, the more people are going to have issues with it, right? Yeah. So it's like the reason you can find so many... I know we'll talk about this later, but the reason you can find so many complaints about it, like on... Um, Common Sense, Common Sense Media, Media, which we yeah, will like come to. Mums now or Reddit. Yeah. It's yeah. because so many, pe- it's so many people have seen yeah. it. You don't get as many, you know, complaints about, you know. And it's people with kids who are monitoring what their children are watching as yeah. well. So you're going to have people complaining. Yeah. I was I, When I was reading some of the country-specific criticisms, which I'm sure we'll talk about later, um, I was thinking that I was like, when you scale anything up, because you have more eyes on it, you have more perspectives, mm-hmm. and each perspective is going to have something that twigs them in the wrong way. Yeah. And potentially lots of people will think that same thing, and it'll be a very loud wall of people going, you've done something wrong. Which like power to the people who've made it because it's such a big thing and they've probably they've dealt with it quite well because apparently they're still quite down to earth and normal yeah because yeah. they said didn't they that like it was just <clears throat> thing after thing after th- it felt like it was constant like this is wrong and this is wrong and change this and change that and it's like when they had like genuine struggle like it, around the time that peppa pig was like commissioned they'd had like a show r- ran for like Night a dawn. It was called The Big Night. Big Night. And it had a series and it was apparently very good and it won a couple of awards and it didn't get picked up for a second series. So this is Neville Astley and Mark Baker and the producer is Phil Davis. So the three of them made uh, The Big Nights and they went on to make Peppa Pig. Mm. Uh, they lead a, a team of 16 animators. So... When it wasn't recommissioned, they were a bit down and they thought, if we don't come up with the next big thing, then we're going to have to find different careers. And they worked really hard for anyone to give them the green light, give them funding for Peppa Pig, like really hard. And even now, they I mean, they could have had the option to retire very young and they just kind of carried on doing what they were doing. And it just seems like they're quite down to earth, nice people. I I haven't seen big nights but that was on the bbc was it yeah and so the bbc didn't pick it up for a second season and i when i was reading that i was like interesting because peppa pig feels super bbc and i was i was surprised when i found out it wasn't on the bbc i was like oh and it's like because they they intentionally didn't pitch it to the bbc because of being a bit interesting um, i didn't know that and to me that i'm like okay so you, you have worked with the bbc you probably bbc vibe and i'm like okay that does make sense and i get not pitching it to bbc i bet i bet they're like oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah i mean it's channel five isn't it yeah. and nickelodeon yeah. and well everything isn't it and i'm really surprised it's not graduated to cbbc i don't think it would never it be has. cbbc it'd be cbb's that's what i meant sorry <laughs> it's, yes. in the, it's in the genre preschool <laughs> yes um, I what I think of Peppa Pig is watching it as an adult. I find it's oh, how do I say this? It's got an interesting vibe where it sort of feels like Dadaism, like a weird Dadaist comedy because mm. of the narrator and the flat voice of the narrator, which almost sounds like audio description. Mm. It's very strange yes like I, how do i do, how do i explain it meg i, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> i was likening it in my head to family guy because it has a similar kind of like weird sitcom yeah things that are, i just don't find funny but i know a lot of parents at the time probably would have like how family guy had its day and you watch it now and i remember when well, when I was a teenager, when I was a young teenager, I, probably, I, I did find it quite funny. I don't find Family Guy funny now at all. And I watch it and I think, this is so outdated and it's so it, it's almost tone deaf. And I felt the same about Peppa Pig. Interesting. Does that make sense? Like a dated sitcom. Well, it's got the... It's, the sorry, yeah. it's got the ugly, overweight father. It, incompetent, ugly, yes. overweight father. Like, father's stereotypical figure. The Homer the, Simpson, the... the other one no, just, the what's he called peter, peter griffin. griffin it's got the peter yeah. griffin it's got the the slightly more attractive wife who's more competent and tells her husband off for doing everything and does all the work and two children who run riot around the both of them what well, yeah like, you're right when yeah. i was watching it i was literally going to oh, animated sitcom 
partially yeah, because yeah, it, yeah. it does that so you know the uh, monomyth thing the 12 story step thing yes yeah joseph campbell's yeah so mm. for sitcoms they have a different one because in yeah. sitcoms everything has to go back to being the same at the end of the episode nothing yeah. can change well one of the um that's interesting because one of the criticisms was the characters never learn anything and that is exactly yeah. like a sitcom well exactly so but because then- of this they literally can't learn anything they literally can't age all of these things and it kind of it annoyed me i was hoping when i went to season six that george had maybe grown up a teeny bit because he the- i mean all george does is cry and say dinosaur dinosaur yeah and i was which like which is what kids boys of his age do which is why i was hoping he had they'd been aged up a teeny bit or something mm, because of course it, not. i would like him to have talked and i was like that's what cemented it as animated sitcom for me yeah it's always going to be like a sitcom what's the word layout format structure yeah. structure because you're churning out yeah. hundreds of episodes yeah. of it you can't have hundreds of episodes five minutes long with loads of character development it's not it doesn't work like that mm. and yet they've obviously done something really clever because kids are obsessed with it yeah. and many parents find it one of the far less annoying ones to have in the background like a lot of parents have said it's at times quite enjoyable and there are there are jokes in there for parents mm. and i think that probably comes from the deadpanness and the way that the actors talk there's a parcel as well probably that box of reinforced concrete i ordered because morwenna banks who plays the mum and i can't remember the dad's name i can't remember his actors hang on daddy pig daddy pig yeah i can't remember the actor's daddy name pig by his own colleagues yeah <laughs> Um, they're both comedic actors. So Morwenna Banks is one of the main characters in a scripted sitcom by Reeves and Mortimer. Yeah. And no one's seen it. It's a, it's got a bit of a cult following. It's called Catterick. Reese Shearsmith's in it. Uh, yeah, Matt Lucas is in it. So this flotilla is popular, is it? Very. Do you not hear about last year's? It's terrible. Three ships lost, 27 sailors injured... Hundreds of spectators inconvenience for months, and all because one woman took it upon herself to bear her breasts in a gale force seven. Still, seems to be a lot better organised this year. <coughs> oh, whoops a daisy. Is that that for your asthma, is it? No, it just makes me feel better. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? It doesn't last long. Oh, that's a shame. Ah, Richard Ridings is the name of Daddy Pig, and he was in Bouncers by John Godber, mm-hmm. uh, which isn't a play that I like, but it is a comedy. Elsie's apparently, not a John fan. no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> Laura doesn't know who he is. He's a playwright from Hull. Anyway, Morwenna Banks is a hilarious comedic actress. I do feel like she's wasted in Peppa Pig. I always, I got the sense that she knew what she was part of, though. Oh, for I mean? sure, and like, she's obviously done really well out of it because I bet that they're minted from this mm. i hope i hope i hope so yeah. should we talk a bit about how ah, it got made oh sorry question Lord. first yeah. just because all of these perspectives of adult perspectives watching it did any of you watch it when you were a kid no i believe i did um but the only re like because I, I remember the theme tune uh and the reason i think i did is because my dad has told me something he's noticed about peppa pig and why else would he be watching mm. it unless we were watching it with my cousins when they were young which i think which i think we might have been doing so i remember having this conversation with him as an adult and he, yeah i feel like childless people still very much know what peppa pig well, is he said he noticed, <laughs> yeah. he noticed a lot of like he was noticing animation inconsistencies with it and one of them was like, you know, they sleep in a bunk bed. Yeah. One of them that was like, when it was zoomed in, there was a ladder on the bunk bed. But when it was zoomed out, there was no ladder oh, on the bunk unforgivable. bed. Unforgivable. <laughs> and my dad was like, but how's she getting down? <laughs> how's she getting down if she needs a wee in the night? <laughs> yeah, that's one dead pig. <laughs> or seriously maimed. Mm. <laughs> Did anyone smell bacon? um she's animated laura speaking of bacon i was googling peppa pig as my first point of call today and one of the people also asked was 
can Muslims watch Peppa Pig? <laughs> and then That's I thought, cute. actually, oh. is that can they so it turns out google doesn't really have any good answers so if any muslims are listening is peppa pig halal i wonder i wonder i mean yeah that's off the top of my head all i know is that they can't eat pig because but the Muppets. rules were written before animation this is true and it's like um my one of my dad's girlfriends was, when our dog was round she couldn't touch our dog because of a similar like uncleanliness thing like especially the nose so it might i mean i don't know if you can get unclean watching a pig i, I mean in the middle east muppets ran into some problems because miss of miss piggy, piggy mm. so yeah did they run into problems in france because of kermit <laughs> They made a whole film about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> uh, I, well, you know, I remember what I was going to say. I didn't watch it as a kid at all. I think, I mean, I, we weren't too old. We were all the potential yeah, because, age to watch yeah, it. Yeah, I was the, six. You yeah, were, six. what, seven? Six. six. Yeah. Six. Well, the okay. second girl that voiced Same was only year. <laughs> two years younger than me. Yeah. So... Okay. But, but I don't I, I don't remember it at all. I just remember like I, I can't remember what age I got to and suddenly Peppa Pig was fucking everywhere. Yeah, I never No, I didn't watch it as a kid. I just did. I guess maybe I didn't watch enough Channel Five to catch it. I watched it in the morning. I mm. loved Channel Five in the yeah, morning. So did Milkshake. I. Yeah, milkshake. I, so I, good. I watched stuff that was probably a little bit older than I should have been watching because cause my brother just would have refused to watch it for four year olds. Yeah. He just wouldn't have done that. These two animators, they gave themselves a week to think of the next big thing because there'd been a bit of a hole left by Postman Pat Bob the Builder. There was a power vacuum in kids' TV. And <laughs> boy, did they manage it. Honestly. So they had two friends. Say something, Laura. I just, I think that the power vacuum left by Peppa Pig being on break has been filled by Bluey. Yeah, or Hey Dougie as well. Mm. Because Bluey is huge, and I actually way prefer. It, oh, it's a lot better. It's, it's so much Bluey better. Bluey is genuinely same a really animation good show. software. There's is it? Yeah, I don't want to jump ahead of things, but I read. I was reading. I was in on a Reddit thread earlier about the kind of. I don't want to bring things up before we're ready to talk about them. No, it's all right. About the like the fat shaming in the show, mm. and someone mentioned how differently Bluey has handled this kind of thing. So apparently, there was an episode where. The mum and dad in Bluey were unhappy about their weight and decided to start an exercise regime or something like that. And um, a doctor or something, I don't remember what they said, because I haven't actually fact-checked this, this was just on the thread. In fact, um, they contacted the showrunners and was like, that's not it. Uh, um, Maybe do this differently. And they cut, they were like, yeah, okay. And cut a load out of the show. Oh, wow. Okay. Um. So there's been comparisons made between them because yeah. I think it's true. It's a, a big hole has been... Bluey's doing really well, isn't it? Yeah, In a yeah. similar way. Yeah. And Bluey, I think, approaches topics holistically and sensitively in a way that Peppa Pig just sort of pile drives through without really checking. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. Peppa Pig is like story-led yeah. and not issue-led. It's yeah. like yeah. Peppa Pig walked so Bluey could run. Yeah. Yeah. Got a big tummy, Daddy. Is there a baby in there? <laughs> I'll slide down with you. Daddy, you're too big to go down the slide. Don't be silly, Peppa. I'm not too big. Stand back. Ready? Steady? Go! <gasps> Daddy Pig is stuck. <laughs> <laughs> it's not funny. They just make comments about daddy pig even though they're all the same shape yeah they're all the same shape oh whoops they're all the same shape so i mean what difference does it make i think what they should be commenting on is this horrible beard have a shape it is a horrible beard grow it out or get rid of it yeah stop having like a five o'clock spiky shadow a beard made of eight hair (laughs) (laughs) whatever um but yeah it's something that it's been widely widely and rightly criticized for I also have a question for you two guys, because at the bottom of that Guardian article, they talk about how one of these people uses it in their writing classes, and that it's really great writing. A three-act structure. Yeah, like, they said it was just really amazing writing. I mean, it's tight, but it's... It is what it is. I wanted to get your opinion on actually how good you think the writing is, because I wasn't, like, blown away by it. 
in any sense, really. I, I don't uh, think it's bad. No, it, I mean, it is what it is. It it fits the five minutes that it needs to fit mm. and things. There's a beginning, middle and end. And I mean, I don't know. I've not watched it as a very young child, so I don't. Yeah, it's I'm coming it, at it. It's from enough, an adult, you know. Like, it is what it is. Because well, they 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 tried, and I was reading about the writing. They tried to have some kind of, so they had a really tight three act structure for every single episode. Every five minutes has a really, and there's supposed to be a message behind every single one. Like, don't give up. This is for Peppa Pig. Yeah, this. For yeah, Peppa yeah, Pig. yeah. Um, so they try and do that, and all the ones I was watching, I was like, I mean, maybe, but I don't, I don't think so. And like one of them, Daddy Pig just walks through a blunders through a fucking blackberry bush for no reason when a perfectly sensible woman went you should use the path <laughs> i mean honestly daddy pig is hilarious i honestly believe that mr wolf and his family are moving into their new home oh look little piggies hello i'm wendy wolf i'm peppa pig <laughs> thank you for building our house mr pig What's it made of? Straw? Sticks? It's made of bricks. Let's see how strong it is. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll... Hmm, that is strong. What's your own house made of, Mr Pig? Bricks. So don't even think about it. I think his his dialogue and his deadpan way of delivering it and just how knowingly stupid he is i mean this is something that people had issues with in a people thought it was a sexist thing but we'll we'll talk about it but i'm I'm just going to finish telling you how i mean i know that you both already know but um this is the end of the story (gasps) they had a couple no they had they had friends who were a couple who had like a three or four year old child which was lily snowden yeah so pepper the voice of Pepper. The parents. voice of Pepper, and their her mum said to them, "Well, I, I'm reading her stories, and she's saying, where's the mummy and daddy?'" And these animators realised that the first thing that makes sense to a child is a family structure. That is the first mm. thing that they learn, basically. So, and there aren't a lot of shows. Well, shows at the time didn't really have it. I just realised that a lot of the shows at the time, the focus was on a central man's profession. Yes, <laughs> the postman yeah. Pat. No, exactly. Yeah, Fireman <laughs> like, Sam. Fireman Sam. Yeah, or just... <laughs> animals that don't even that don't speak or don't speak English. We were watching men go to work. That was what we were watching. Men at work. Men at work. <laughs> What did what did men at work do? Um, da- Over, down overkill. under. Oh. What overkill? And yeah, down under. That's men at work, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, great song. So yeah, that's how it got made. They really, really struggled to get it made because basically a lot of people told them the way that Peppa Pig looks with her side on profile very difficult to turn into three D merch. Yeah. And yet and they've managed it. They've super, managed, super it. managed it. I don't know why that was an issue. You just don't do that. You just make it the eyes in the normal place. I do not understand why that was an issue. That's people being thick, in my opinion. Oh, it's so difficult. We managed to do it, though. <laughs> we managed to do it loads and loads and loads and make billions yeah, of pounds. Yeah, when there's money, there's a way, right? Yeah. Where there's a wallet, there's a way. So in, sorry, this is coming from Wikipedia. In November 2021, UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson, speaking at a Confederation of British Industry conference, lost his place in his speech for about 20 seconds and diverted into a lengthy tangent about Peppa Pig, describing the character's shape as a Picasso-like hairdryer. Now, I don't agree with this man on anything, but he is he is right about it looking like a hairdryer. He's not the only person who said that, though, so he doesn't get credit for it. No, you're right. Of course. Of course. So I think her name is Layla Lewis, who actually... Um, so so she was apparently in the meeting that saved the project. Mm. Um she, uh, this is according to a Guardian long read that I that I read. I don't know how true it is, but basically she went into the meeting and snorted and everyone thought it was hilarious yeah. because to be fair it is funny when they just fall about and laugh and snort. It is. I think it's kind of cute. It is. Like it is. It's kind of charming. It's very iconic as well yeah. like <laughs> Everyone loves jumping up and down in muddy puddles. (laughs) 
<laughs> I mean, two year olds just find that that shit hilarious. Mm-hmm. It's better than like Coco Melon. Yeah, I don't know Coco. I don't really know what we that should is. do it sometime. And just it's another one of those heads episode where we just spew <laughs> hatred for two hours. Yeah, no, the thing, the the thing that's so negative about Coco Melon is that there purely isn't enough to say about it. There's it, there's not enough substance. To engage and learn. No, there's not enough substance to do an episode about it oh. because there's n- it's nothing. Yeah. It's simply nothing. It's it like, would be like mostly talking about controversy. Yeah, it, yeah. It's it, it makes it success based on kids liking moving colours and shapes. Speaking of controversy, Peppa Pig has a Loads. lot. Like, a lot. Yeah. I'm so glad that we can bring back the common sense media section of this show so if this is the first episode you're listening to sometimes if it's a popular enough show the website common sense media will have reviews from parents of the show so it's it's a website that allows parents to let other parents know if a piece of media is good or not to show to children and every so often if we're covering a show that's popular enough we get to read some bad reviews to some sad music and Peppa Pig has those. And I'm really happy that we're kicking off the new year and the new series with a Common Sense Media section. I'm very excited to welcome it back. All right, so this is some bad reviews of Peppa Pig from parents. Start the sad music. Gone Downhill. It used to be a good show, but it's going downhill real fast. No longer age appropriate. Digger. First, my child was watching Peppa Pig first. I thought it was a great show, but it changed when George said Digger Digger. A few days later, she kept saying the N word when there was an excavator. I quickly changed the video to Coco Melon, but it didn't work. She kept saying the N word and N word and being bossy. <laughs> uh, taught my two year old to spit. George, Peppa's brother, spits when he's angry and taught my two-year-old to spit when she's angry. Watch Daniel Tiger. Too much violence. Disappointed. I watched an episode of Peppa Pig this morning with my four-year-old grandson. It was a Father's Day episode. I was extremely surprised to hear comments from Mummy Pig that Father's Day was a made-up day and Mother's Day was a real day. That's what I should tell my grandson that his father isn't important and doesn't matter. My dad's gone, and I wish I could spend one more Father's Day with him. You should be ashamed of yourselves. Pepper, the annoying little piggy. She's bossy. She orders George around. She's rude and self-centred. Is this really suitable toddler material? If you want your kids to grow up being a bossy little know-it-all, then Peppa Pig will be right up your alley. Also, it's sexist. Daddy Pig is fat, lazy and stupid and Mummy Pig is always criticising him. He can't even make a barbecue work and requires all the mummy animals to come save him. Yes, yes, all men stupid. Haha, it's funny, isn't it? What a great role model this show is. The show never ends and the characters never age. <laughs> Liars! <laughs> this one's so good. I love this, this one. One's so- Liars! Very factually misleading on the colour of the fruit on bramble bushes. Extremely infuriating. Peppa Pig, you fatty. This title... <laughs> this title has too much violence, too much sex, too much swearing, too much drinking, slash drugs, slash smoking. Smoking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Liars. <laughs> that was the common sense media section. So glad to have it back. My issue with Peppa Pig... Is, so a lot of people think it's sexist because it's like oh, the dad can't do anything and the dad's not important. But yeah, but what I find sexist about it is that the dad is like a fun dad and the mum is like the killjoy. Like, don't jump in muddy puddles. And the dad is like, no, you can. Like, If you've got your boots on. Yeah, I just found it really kind of... Morwenna Banks, I feel, deserves more. She's a brilliant actress and Peppa Pig doesn't utilise her. Like, she's just the killjoy boring mum and that's what i find sexist about it what was that big splash what big splash 
Daddy Pig, did you know you've got a duck on your head? Oh, uh, yes. Well, I did fall in the pond. <laughs> Daddy Pig, this study is a complete mess. It's not that bad. There are lots of cobwebs. I love cobwebs. They give the room character. Cobwebs mean spiders, and I don't like spiders. Oh, Daddy Pig, look at the mess you're in. I hate the daddies. The daddies? I hate all of them. I hate all of them. There's one... And I hate them for the... Re like, I... I, I know that you've just said this is... You think that it's more sexist the other way, but I hate the... Especially, this is how I find it is so outdated, like, the constant, like, perpetuating that mums do the... I know daddy does the cooking. It was like, you know, a little nod at, like, oh, dads do things. Sometimes mm -hmm. the roles are swapped. But most of the time in the show, mummy cleans up all of the mess... Yeah. And fixes all of Daddy's problems, like yeah. in the episode where the mummies are part of. They have a, f a fire rescue team and end up having to. Where the daddies are having a barbecue and they end up having to go put out the fire that they've started yeah. because they're so incompetent. Mummy does like, all the laundry. I've noticed is, that one. This is what's so good about Bluey. Like, I'm sick of seeing. Rep like, oh, yeah, it's great that it's a representation of a family, blah, 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 blah. But I'm sick of seeing representations of families that are like. Heteronormative. Mums that wanted to be parents. And dads that wanted to dad. Yeah. Like, it's, yeah. it's, there's a difference between wanting to have children and wanting to be a parent. And I'm sick of seeing this. It's like, cause it's, it, especially in like Britain in the modern day and age, it, it's not, we're not that anymore. We're it's not. It's also like 2004, both parents have been working that whole, like, what household has a stay-at-home mum that can actually do all of it, even That's in 2004? That's I'm not saying anything about if you if there's a stay-at-home parent, fine, that's hmm. great. But it's like, as the world has moved, like, more, I guess, more in the favour of women in the workplace and that kind of thing, it's a, it, it hasn't as much moved in the favour of dads picking up slack. And it's not as common. It's like, it's common for a, a woman to be going to work and working a full-time job and also doing all the shit yeah. at home. And I think it's a bad example to parents who are watching it, let alone yeah. children. There's so many things lately talking about all these extra hours of work because housework is work how uh that mothers, women generally do. Even in households without kids, let alone households with kids, where it's like the mum does a full-time job and then comes home and has an extra 20 hours of work a week cooking cleaning laundry packing stuff for the kids and it's like the dad does one thing it's like look at me i'm being a good dad it's like you're you're just being here like yeah. you're not being a good you're just you're just being here like those those videos where the mom goes away for a weekend and she comes back and the house is in utter chaos because the dad hasn't done anything it's like what there's a reason that they can't move anything forward with the show is because if they had, they would have been moving towards a messy divorce. <laughs> if they had been moving forward for the last, what, 20 years, they wouldn't still be together, would they? Mm. Another nicer man would have come along and she'd have left Daddy Pig, the useless twat. I mean, according to the the way this world apparently operates it would have to be another pig that comes along because they're all like <laughs> oh yeah 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 there's no cross species couples no here. this no. is not bojack horseman <laughs> <laughs> on the note of speed like and bojack is the same i don't know if blue is the same i think everyone in blue is a dog but um what is the delineation between talking species and not talking species why do the ducks not talk oh yeah why do the worms not well talk? i think that <laughs> worm. Um, we a worm because no it's mouth. a worm pig they have what a mouth. No mouth it's all mouth oh shit they do have <laughs> you've seen june no i haven't oh you actually haven't okay <laughs> Why, why would I waste my time? Um, oh, but you'd have learned that worms have mouths. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the ducks don't, they just quack. I think because it's farmyard animals and woodland creatures. 
that's what. Right, you got what... hedgehogs, rabbits, pigs. Yeah, because the, the Mrs. Rabbit does... She's the all... Barbie of that world. She has every Yeah, job. she does all the jobs in the town. She's got a rescue centre. No, sorry, a rescue service. She flies fire a helicopter. Engine. Fire and engine. And isn't she... She's cafe. Is she, she not drives, a school she, teacher as well? She drives the train. Mummy Rabbit has arrived at the supermarket. Thank goodness you're here, Miss Rabbit. Miss Rabbit is ill. I'll be doing her job today. Are you not Miss Rabbit? No, I'm her sister, Mummy Rabbit. Is this where I sit? Uh, yes. Have you ever worked a checkout before? No. Uh, Miss Rabbit's ice cream stall. Daddy, why are you buying an ice cream? Oh, Pepper. I was on the way to the gym when I thought an ice cream would be nice. Miss Rabbit is ill. You've got to sell the ice cream today. Granddad Dog's breakdown service. Miss Rabbit is ill. Can you drive a bus today? Of course, Pepper. I don't know if you saw this episode, but she drives the train. <laughs> wow. I mean, she does. Yeah, she's Barbie. It's like, it's like th- this woman... She doesn't just have one job. She has to do all the jobs to make end me- ends meet. And Mr. Rabbit's not doing fucking anything, mate. Pick up some slack. Well, we've, I don't know if we've seen Mr. Rabbit. I would love to see the she corporate Peppa mom. Pig world. <laughs> yeah, she, she might be single rabbit. She there is there's one, rabbit. I think, granddad animal. I don't remember which animal. That's voiced by Brian Blessed, which is always amusing to Lovely. me. I don't know why. We need a nice sunny spot to plant your seeds. Here we are. Grandpa Pig is digging Pepper and George's garden. Oh! Ah, tea for the workers. Thank you, Daddy Pig. Um, Beef tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> she's also very badly behaved. That's another... Yeah. Um, so a lot she's of parents cheeky. think she's a terrible role, role model. Yeah. She's a mean older sister. She's a mean older she's sister. She's always telling George, No, George, you can't do that. You're too small. Like I mean, who's not said that to their younger sibling here's the, here's or like, random child on the street? I mean, I was going to say, Meg, you're an only child, but yes, there are random children <laughs> on the street that you can, you can say that to. Here's the thing with, like, she's accurately acting like a child at times when That's she's true. doing these things. But it's also like... But her parents aren't telling her not to do it. The, her parents aren't telling her not to do it, and that isn't necessarily the job of these kind of shows. Like, she should... She is a role model for children, and she's still acting like this. And she's never having comeuppance for doing these certain behaviours. I, of, I think she should. She should either act the, better or she should be told off. I and disagree. it should be made clear that it's not a good thing to do. I disagree and I'll tell you why I disagree. Shows like this and it's really, really difficult in children's media um, because parents act as a block. And that's why in a lot of children's media there are no parents because there is no one there to enforce the rules. So it's like... Or they have to be really stupid. Or they have to be really stupid, yeah. So I I understand why a lot of parents don't like it because it's like a lot of people on Reddit and stuff were talking about, oh, my child copied this behaviour, my child copied that behaviour. Like saying the word yuck a lot. Yeah, but it... You you are then able to, as a parent, use that as a learning opportunity. Yeah, true. I'm sure when I have children, I will change my mind on this. But it would be a much worse, much more boring fucking show if every time Pepper did... So the, the creator said that the reason her dress is red and the reason her name is Pepper is because she's meant to be a bit spicy and she's meant to have like more of a personality and that represents that, which she does... As far as is possible, as a little girl can do, right? And a lot of the humour that makes some parents endure it comes from her being fucking nasty to her friends. Uh, can you whistle, Susie? No. Oh, good. I mean, that's sad if you can't whistle. But good, because I can't whistle. What's whistling anyway? You put your lips together and blow. Like this. Hello? I, the thing is, she she isn't that nasty, though, is she? Like, when I, when I was she's very re- blunt. When She's blunt, but children are, mm. right? And when I was reading the reviews, and I just watched, like, 40 minutes of it. So I just watched loads of episodes. 
And I hadn't, I wasn't relating to what they were saying. Obviously, I'd not lived with a child who'd started copying her behavior or whatever. And if that behavior is the things like fat shaming and being really rude, Mm. then yes, that should not be in there. I do not condone the fat shaming. But her being cheeky, yeah, yeah, cute and cheeky, and you know, just a little bit misbehaving. She's not that bad. Like no, she, she's not. You know I, I mean, mean, she did. I don't have... think. I don't think every episode should be like, oh, naughty Pepper. You should no. I mean, that. that's true. That would she be boring. Had, yeah. She had a password for her playhouse, and the password was Daddy's big tummy. Yeah, but that I is hilarious. I, I, I <laughs> no, I'm sorry, it is. Like, the, it's the, funny the, for us. It's not. Yeah. You yeah know, okay. Yeah. Kids the, shouldn't learn. We no. know that's bad. <laughs> yeah. the, kids don't. Yes. The, the thing that I found stand out annoying about her, and kids are like this, and this is one that never, never really gets dealt with in the show. Um, is and this is this makes sense for her. She's very entitled. Um, she thinks she she is the main character which she is so her acting like that i mean tracks but it's also like you aren't actually like you you're you're not the main character of your family in real life you're not entitled to have complete command over the playroom your little brother also is allowed to be there and play and that's the kind of thing that i think would be very easy to just get into a kid's brain that's like no i'm the most important yeah everyone else plays second fiddle to me however children haven't learned that yet have they like that age they're not they are the main character yeah no no it's just one of those things that i it it would worry me as a parent for that to get really deeply embedded into my kids behavior i would like to go back to talking about how they decided which animals spoke and didn't speak there's a giant potato that speaks there in this show. There is a giant potato at Diggerland. And then they go to use a claw <laughs> What's machine. What's Diggerland? It's, it, they're at this place called Diggerland. There, there is actually Diggerlands in the UK. There's one in Rochester. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Someone knows about Diggerland. Um, I think no, it's no, Digger no. over there. Explain. I don't actually know what Diggerland is. <laughs> anyway, they're at Diggerland. Uh, and it's like um, Pepper and George on these diggers that are like pedal operated. And mummy and daddy... <laughs> mummy and daddy pig are having to like <laughs> pedal them to operate them and they're both sweating and then like the they have like this opportunity to go on this claw machine and in the claw machine are like this digger land is run by this giant potato <laughs> he's just a giant fuck? potato and he has a, a wife that's a carrot and he talks but inside the claw machine this is what they can win stuffed dinosaurs or stuffed mr potatoes <laughs> he's got himself in the dick it's all in the claw machine and dick what alive. would you rather dinosaur who would win dinosaur or potato it was like Pota- well, one, potatoes have won there was they're, they're here dino- yeah, yeah. <laughs> was, yeah they've endured yeah. there was one dinosaur and the rest were potato men oh. say hello to my dinosaur friends uh, don't be frightened they are not real. But this is exactly how they would have looked walking the Earth together. No, it's not. What? Triceratops lived in the Cretaceous period. The Stegosaurus was Jurassic. They would not have walked together. How do you know that? I'm a clever clogs. <coughs> anyway, who wants to ride one? Me, me. Why have you got dinosaurs in Potato City? Uh, because dinosaurs ate potatoes? No. Anyway, children like dinosaurs. Dinosaurs! Dinosaurs! <laughs> the, the other shows like, like, fucking, um, Bojack Horseman have the same problem where I'm going, Elsie, why can't the fish speak? <laughs> or like, why can't this species Well, I had speak? to explain to... Laura seen some Bojack Horseman, but not all of it. And she said to, she said to me, do they eat meat? And I said, yes. And she went, what do you mean? And I said, well, there is a really dark episode dedicated to it, which is, I think if Peppa Pig had free reign to do whatever they wanted, but no repercussions, they should explore. They eat potatoes. I've seen them eat Pigs potatoes. Eat I mean, it'll be a, it would be a different world if we ate potatoes, but potatoes also spoke in yeah, our that, world. Yes, that's that's what I mean. Like, 
I they they were making a soup and they were peeling potatoes. Also, they threw away the peels, and I was like, you know what, pigs actually in real life love eating <laughs> peels. I mean, do they, or is that just what we choose to give them? No, they I love don't it. think pigs okay. love eating anything. They just eat everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not the same, is it? Like, oh, I love eating everything. <laughs> remember, remember, oh, I just eat everything. <laughs> remember else we watched the pig racing videos? Oh and yeah, they, have, they love root vegetables and vegetable peels. Like, uh, what a weird thing to have admit to on the pod I it's once so walk- cute. Shut up, I once wo- walked into the living room and these two were fucking watching pig racing videos they just turned around and left <laughs> but no I'm not what's it I'm called it's a channel it it is called a channel. pig uh, tournament something pig, like that yeah. they've they've had like 10 seasons uh, yeah they like have and the salt and pepper no pepper ginger they've they've, really they've all got them. names they're little they're not like big pigs they're little pigs it's very humane. Yeah. It's it's run by someone that actually looks after these yeah. pigs. It's not like dog fighting. No. There is dog racing. Do you like. remember that oh, episode yes. of Taskmaster where they had to bring in the most high octane item and Sally Phillips brought in illegal pig feed. Illegal pig feed. Piggy make you fat. <laughs> Illegal it's so because... calorific it's illegal in the UK. <laughs> and they weren't allowed to show a picture of it. That is the best prize task in all of Taskmaster is piggy make I want you fat. Some... I want to win some illegal <laughs> pig <laughs> feed. <laughs> the potato fucking. Sp- I mean, it's and it's this potato that speaks in the show is bigger than all the animals. He's massive. He is, and he's he's very scary looking. Like they actually have done studies on plants, and they do make noise. It's a frequency we can't hear. And if they're oh thank God. if if they're healthy, they make less noise. And if they're like. If they need watering, they make more noise. Jesus, um, I don't. So I don't what, know if it was a potato plant. So, but... what about when you're cooking mushrooms and they scream? Is that is that yeah, the same maybe thing? it becomes audible? <laughs> well, no, you've heard that they, I they have. squeak. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, I hate mushrooms. I know you do. No, they just, are delicious. They're freaky. No, they're, they're not. squeaky. <laughs> That's why they're freaky. <laughs> Pigs are also squeaky. They have gills, guys. Do you remember when Boris Johnson was making a speech a couple of years ago and he just went off on a tangent about Peppa Pig? Yeah, and he took his kid to Peppa Pig Land, didn't he? Yeah, so should we talk about the... Oh, yeah. theme parks now. It's huge. The Guardian article we read was, it was like titled, It's Like Going to Meet the Pope, because all these kids were just in awe of the actor Giant. dressed up as pepper yeah. and like being handed to her they're just like wow real life massive pig. Oh, you like remember, lords for children do you remember that meme that went around ages ago about how tall pepper pig is like, <laughs> it'd be like something like 17 yeah. meters tall or <laughs> yeah. like mario is six foot tall and it's like pepper pig nah. is like 20 yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous yeah, it's, it's, it's ridiculous <laughs> well the thing is in the scale factor the hill that they live oh. on Jesus, she probably would be about twenty foot tall. They that hill is so steep. Could you imagine, like, just climbing home? Well, <laughs> mummy, yeah, daddy dad- pigs are state car. No, mummy pigs are state cars. She does all the driving. Yeah, she's a really good driver. Apparently, I mean, mummy pigs are state cars should not be making it up that hill. <laughs> no, no, it's like vertical. Yeah, it is. I got it right that time. <laughs> oh, do you mix up vertical yeah. and horizontal? I, I know horizon, horizontal, but I always say that. What about diagonally? Well, that's just diagonally. Yeah, well, it's part of it. It's part of the conversation. You can't leave it out. Yeah, but I don't, I don't get that. Mixed what up. about landscape and portrait? Does that trip you up? No. What about left and right? No. Okay. Left and right trips me up. Oh, does it? No, oh. I don't know how to describe it. Like, until i started learning how to drive i had no problem with left and right and i know which one is left and i know which one is right but if you ask me to point i will point to the wrong one oh, and i don't know why Live, living <laughs> i know i know which one is left living here like living in london with like the river being a really good indicator i'm getting really good at cardinal directions oh god could never be me North uh, directions of any kind could well, never be you. Oh my god. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. Laura, Laura and Meg once made me go to the doctor because my sense of direction is so bad. It wasn't just that, That's but not the reason. No, I was reason. okay. I was already going to the doctor. And we were like, they, tell them this. Tell them, tell them this. Tell them that sometimes when you're walking places. 
that you've walked many times before, you suddenly forget where you're going. You phone... Okay, we have a Tesco's that's a fairly straightforward route to get to. Oh, it is. And <laughs> Elsie phoned Meg, like, I'm lost. <laughs> it's like... Because you, you'd accidentally yeah. gone left too early and you just got completely lost. And both you and me were like, I don't understand how to explain it to you because I don't understand how you got lost. Well, no, what, what happened was when we finally realised where you were and what direction you were pointing and I said, look up. Yeah, and you could see Tesco. <laughs> it's, it's so bad. So basically, I was at this doctor's for all the other reasons I had to be there, and I mentioned this, and he went, "Okay, well, ne- when you come back, we'll do some tests." I was like, "No, no, no! It's, it's happened like three or four times. It's this fine. Week. It's fine." <laughs> and he said, "Yeah, we'll do some tests." And when I had the tests. He asked me, what year is it? And I went, 19... Oh, wait, no. (laughs) Like, I just immediately came out with 19. It's like, that is the easy one. Yeah. (laughs) Especially you had two years in the 1900s. It's so bad. Off to a bad start. It's really bad. It's fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. If it makes you feel better. I had a friend who was staying with me for a while because she was... I don't know if she was working or just, like, in a play or something. And the place where she had to go every day was a straight line from my house and I had to come pick her up most of the time because she would get lost. Oh, bless. So that makes you feel better. You at least get to work easy because that's just a straight line. It is just yeah. a straight line, yeah. You've, we've never had to come pick you up anywhere. <laughs> you nearly have. Yeah. <laughs> These are my friends, Simon Squirrel and Belinda Bear. You can call me Sai. It's short for Simon. And I'm B. It's short for Belinda. <sniffs> I'm Peppa. We'll call you Pe. Oh. And this is George. We'll call you J. Oh. Because it's so popular in the US, but it's British. Uh, American children are picking up little Britishisms where it's like they're saying... Um, tomato. Tomato. Zebra. How clever. How clever. Um, Mummy. Mummy and like or linguists, biscuit. Of, biscuit instead of cookie. Linguists have commented on it, and they're all like, "It's nah, fine. It's yeah. absolutely fine." But parents I, swear if anything, it happens. It's, if anything, it's better. Yeah, honestly, I mean, like zebra. <laughs> I just think biscuits nicer than cookie. Well, because we have biscuit and cookie, but in the US, biscuit means a completely different thing. A fucking scone. scone. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fucking what's Very wrong weird. with you? Why are you putting that they white with sauce gravy on a savory scone? Uh, what are you? Doing. biscuits and gravy as a meal in the u.s i don't understand it maybe if i ate it the i gravy's would but... weird as well like why is it that color what, what could you it? imagine if someone here in the uk instance served you biscuits and gravy like you asked for it and they came back with custard creams covered in pasta oh uh, <laughs> my dad said he once asked for sausage and chips in paris and they brought him sausage and a plate of crisps to fuck with him oh it's like, come don't on. make that mistake in paris mate they will do that what's, to you what's, what's crisps in french um Oh, no. yeah fair. so there was a band episode yes. in and i think this is completely reasonable oh, yeah. on both sides yeah 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 i mean i think that this is not the only t- kids tv show that's had an episode banned in australia for the same reason yeah. so basically it was about not being scared of spiders ma- making friends with spiders i forgot what it's called but in the uk that's completely mr fine. skinny legs i think something he was called bit. something like that it's completely <laughs> fine in the uk to not be afraid of almost all spiders unless you've seen them crawl off a banana run um but i'm genuinely quite scared of that i, I work that. in a shop where a lot of things are imported in massive sacks mm. and I'm genuinely afraid that anyway, it's let's not get into Whereas it. Whereas in Australia, that is not a lesson to teach kids. Do Be not afraid. make <laughs> don't make Be friends afraid. with spiders. Go and get mummy or daddy. I can't remember what show it was, but it was about bears. And they had to ban the episode about bears because in North America, certain places in North America, they are a danger. Yeah. So maybe we don't, don't have them anymore. <laughs> I know, it's a shame. Don't be it? scared when the tide goes out suddenly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Which is like, I don't think that is the, the, the <laughs> having a spider friend episode is fine in the UK and it's completely reasonable the Australian government were like, no. <laughs> Europe, not a problem. No, it's fine. Everywhere else, probably let's not be friends with the spiders yeah shall we talk about why peppa pig got banned in china let's let's get into it well a lot of it is because it's so popular that youtube 
and like spammers mm, on YouTube decided TikTok to, well. and TikTok, I think that's why it got banned, was one of the reasons it got banned in China, um, just decided to make really, really adult versions of Peppa Pig. Apparently they pulled something like 30,000 videos from the Chinese TikTok of Peppa Pig. Yeah, because yeah, it's like, it's like an episode where the dentist tortures Pepper, and it's like I'd pay to see that. What? <laughs> oh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I swear. You don't le- have to. For, you can probably find it on YouTube. For legal reasons, I don't want to see that. <laughs> it, it's just really. I don't. I don't understand the motive behind these. We. Like, I'm gonna call them weirdos. Yeah. The go out of their way to make child-based content that is adult like there's frozen ones there's spider-man ones there's peppa pig ones and i feel it. like it was there was so much of it that i think a lot of it was ai as well just I randomly was, generated all full shit yeah because there are people live action ones oh really on youtube it was a huge problem a few okay. years ago and it was just why why would you do that just make a kid one if you want to make money just make a kid one make a kid friendly one so tell me if i'm getting this wrong but this is how i understand it So there was a sort of youth movement in China that were kind of anti-establishment, kind of slacker culture. And I can't remember the name of this. It's not banned. Is it not? It's not banned. It's not, but it's... They're trying to pair it back. Like, they're trying to... Because it's become a symbol of a subculture that... Amongst, like, teenagers and young people. Like, not so much children but like i don't i can't remember the name of this subculture but it's it translates as person of society oh so okay the thing you're talking about the hashtag peppa pig was banned right um because it was a mobster character so person yeah so person of society person of society mobster oh does it yeah oh okay So it was... Um, and lots of people were getting yeah, like... Tattoos. Tattoos of yeah. Peppa Pig because they turned it into a symbol of... Yeah. yeah, very, very unusual. This was on Chinese TikTok, which is... Um, Dao Yin? Dao Yin. Yeah. Dao Yin. Okay. Um, yeah, because they, like, they've like they had a movie come out in China. Like The year of the pig was 2018 and Peppa Pig was huge. Yeah, I think like, it was 2015 that they had the movie in China. No, it was 2019. Oh, was it? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> it made $14 million. But wow. Yeah, some of it... A in lot, the first three days, sorry. Yeah. A Jesus. lot of it's been like removed from the internet because of people using it in to kind of perpetuate, I guess, an idea of culture that the government doesn't want people it's anti-government to culture yeah. it's like winnie the pooh is found in china because of that whole i've forgotten what is it xi jinping not sure the prime minister of china oh yeah uh people said he looked like winnie the pooh and he didn't like it that's and hilarious it, it went really like really off um and yeah so winnie the pooh i think is banned so in Salford, I don't know if it's still there. I might ask my brother, but um, there was... There's Dox a in your brother? No. <laughs> yes, yeah, Salford, the specific region of... Yes. So there's a bridge and I used to pass under it every time I got the bus into town. Um, Manchester. Yeah, the town being <laughs> Manchester. The town being the big yeah. city of Manchester. So, so Salford is... It's Salford basically, is also a city. Yeah. It's Manchester, but like people don't like people from Manchester like, what, don't like you to say that. But yeah, it's like a tw- like a fifteen minute bus ride into the centre of Manchester. It's like when people call Beverly Hull. Yeah, I, I mean Hate that. from Hull, it's, Watford, it's not. London, Watford, London. Yeah, mm, don't do that. Midlands North. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, if you're from Birmingham, you're from the Midlands. Um, so let me read you an article. Example. No, if you're from Birmingham, you are from the Midlands. If you're from Nottingham. You're also from the Midlands. Stop trying to be the North. <laughs> so this is an article um, from the Salford Star, which talks about this bridge. So this... Humber. No, not <laughs> hum- not the Humber Bridge. No, it's in Salford. <laughs> so Peppa Pig was graffitied on this bridge with the slogan, communism is for the children. And she was holding a hammer and sickle. So this is how the... Uh, <laughs> legend this is get to work bitch (laughs) you gotta work bitch okay bizarre graffiti art has appeared near salford central station depicting the two delighted looking peppa pigs by the slogan communism is for the children the art has led to much amusement and bemusement but is probably related to china banning the popular kids cartoon 
In May, the Daily Mirror reported that 30,000 videos of the strange-looking porker were removed from the Chinese version of YouTube called Daoyin, as she was associated with the young people's Shihurin subculture. The state-run Global Times website denounced these youths as poorly educated with no stable job, unruly slackers roaming around, the antithesis of the young generation the party tries to cultivate. Young Chinese people took to Pepper in a kind of ironic way as a subversive icon, which included creating weird memes and getting tattoos which are linked to gangsterism. As Chinese investment takes over the development of Manchester and Salford, we like to think that this latest graffiti art is a comment on what's going on here. But people can read into it what they like, as Peppa Pig is ca- is catapulted into another political league. <laughs> I would like to know if it's still there. Curious, just how you how would you say Shirin properly? Yeah, I'm I'm really sorry if any Chinese speakers are listening. <laughs> Yeah, no, I would have guessed that, yeah. <laughs> there were two options, hang on. I think it was that one. Hello, Dr. Brown Bear. Hello, children. Does anybody know what this is called? It's an ambulance. An ambulance? And who can tell me what it's for? Taking sick people to the hospital. That's right. Can we hear the Nina Nina sound, please? Yes. <laughs> so just to give you an idea of how much people would pick pick apart this show i mean there's been feminist readings there's been socialist readings there's been do we think it's feminist fat yes. dad, read- <laughs> dad readings so this is in reference to the character dr brown bear who would get oh, yeah. yeah he would get called out for various um he was a doctor that Illnesses. still did home visits. Yeah, he did home visits. So listen to this. Doctor from the 80s. Yes. Right. In the British Medical Journal in 2017, Catherine Bell wrote the article, Does Peppa Pig Encourage Inappropriate Use of Primary Care Resources? See, the thing I Catherine read about Bell, it... Catherine Bell, look at what you... What are you saying? The thing I read that it, it creates an inaccurately high expectation of primary health care and i was like that is depressing as fuck like because we should all expect that we should all expect health care not necessarily call outs for trivial sure, sure. illness stuff fine whatever but like the fact that you've gone out of your way to write a letter like an article about it, i'm like man is that so bleak to me that's like we can't think the children we can't let the children think that doctors are there for you <laughs> like <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> you can't have them thinking that yeah. which is I that horrible. would be don't cruel. make them expect too much don't make them expect a prescription like that's that's hard that's so bleak it is, to me yeah the sentence, does Peppa Pig encourage inappropriate use of primary care resources is hilarious it was. She's written an essay about Peppa Pig. Yeah. <laughs> well, bless you. Okay. Well, there's the issue. Go oh, outside sure. and touch some. Well, she's yeah. she's doing it for a medical have, journal. Yeah. Go do your medical job about Peppa Pig. <laughs> Go outside, touch some grass, have sex. Jesus Christ. Find Jesus. Anything. Yeah. Anything. Eat bacon. Come on, man. The reason that she doesn't want people to expect primary care is because she wants more time to write about Peppa Pig. <laughs> <laughs> I like strawberry. Remember, the jelly is for Mummy Pig. What do you think she would like? Uh, strawberry. I was surprised that it's animated on the same thing as Bluey, because this is obviously a choice, that it's a very simplistically animated show. But, and I, I, I think that the texture of the animation is i like that that gives it enough of a delineation from other animated kid shows, because it looks like it's done with crayons, right? But I found it, like, just a little too much. <laughs> a little, like, all the colours and everything is just too much. Does anyone else get what I mean? I quite like that it looks like a child has drawn it. Yeah. I like it. Okay. I like the way that everything has outlines. Yeah. it's um. They had to go back and add in seatbelts and bike helmets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah, they added seatbelts and bike helmets. Um. Something that this reminded me of, and I I know that I do have a habit of relating things back to 60s Batman, but (laughs) in the first series of 60s Batman, they would jump into the Batmobile and they would go. And then in the second series, they were (laughs) 
required. They were told to put in a shot where they put their seat belts on. <laughs> so what you get is they jump into the Batmobile and then there's like a nice little crotch shot of them both like putting their, yeah, just meeting in the middle. I um, I went to, the last four years of my schooling was in Malaysia and I remember talking to a teacher once who, uh, she was like, yeah, I bought a new car. This was in 2017. She bought a brand new car and she had to get seat belts installed. Whoa. <laughs> what the hell? She bought a car from the 1920s, didn't no, she? Brand new car. It's just like, there's some road stuff that's a bit lax in Malaysia. Was it the 60s when they introduced seat belts? I think so. A Maybe lot of the people 70s in the UK. I don't know. A lot of people, if that was introduced now, wouldn't do it because I think the same people that refuse to wear masks during COVID uh, would yeah. also probably think, Is "Yeah, that... I'm not going to put a fucking seatbelt on." I would they, say probably, they probably did at the time, but I think that's when it became. I don't know if that's when the first seatbelts were introduced. Or I think that's just when it became a law that cars had to have them. Right. Well, okay. so the thi- one like aside, I don't know how you guys wear seatbelts. I have to like put them forcibly under my boobs or else they're very uncomfortable because they do not check these things with a female modeled mannequin they only do it with male mannequins. oh well that doesn't apply to me because i don't have boobs as you well know there's some evidence that actually wearing a seatbelt sometimes in car collisions can be worse for women for wow. female anatomy oh, because it's of... gonna sever my boob off. no no like stuff certain like anatomical reasons that it will, is more likely to cause you certain injuries than if you weren't oh my god mine always wear your seat belts oh yeah we're not <laughs> that's what yeah. worries me sometimes because because of my boobs <laughs> mine cuts across my neck yeah I like to, this. I, have, I have to put it under yeah. and then it's like yeah, yeah. all the way down at, almost at the uh, beginning of my arm See, there are some benefits to being me. <laughs> you still have some of these anatomical, like, rib cage size and that kind of thing that sure. might lend you to the injuries I'm talking about. But at the same time, you might be flung out the front window. This so. is why I don't like being in moving vehicles. I mean, guys. I mean, it's trains? Um, trains and... Train, a train is the vehicle I enjoy the most. Yes. I love a train. But wear your seatbelts. Just, we're not suggesting. Oh, yeah, yeah, wear your yeah, seatbelts. I just don't like buses, don't like cars. It's kind like of wild boats, it to me out. that buses don't have seatbelts. Yeah, me too. Um, the, the thing is, I don't go at any speed, That's really. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, I don't coach. know. Have you ever watched the no. movie Speed? A co- <laughs> A coach, if you were going to like France with school, they have they seat, seat belts. Oh yeah, they did. Shall we do the socials? Can we remember how? It's been a while since I we've done this. I remember the email. I you remember can, the Twitter. You can find Sorry, us Twitter. on which one do I do? Twitter. You can find us on Twitter at thoughts underscore underscore TV. You can find us on Instagram at thoughts TV. The O is a zero, or on TikTok at thoughts TV pod. And you can email us at thoughtstv2002 at gmail.com. And do you know what? If you fancy giving us an email, it really is like Christmas Day when an yeah. email comes an in. E- we love oh it. my God, an email. An email. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, I, don't, I don't know what the Discord is off the top of my head. The link is there. We'll we'll talk to also, you. Also, thanks to friend of the pod Emily for sending us a Christmas card and saying oh, it was yeah. because we doxed ourselves. That was really cute. You just know our address because you've been here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening, everyone. Hope you have a beautiful 2024. And thank you for listening to the Peppa Pig episode. Hope you enjoyed it. And look forward to some of the episodes coming up that you guys have selected yourselves. Yes. Exciting. Exciting.